Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Four Ways to Keep BI from Overwhelming IT. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Stacy Jensen. I'm the Sales Manager for the Business Intelligence Division here at Help Systems. I will be your host for today's webinar. Presenting today is our subject matter expert, Steve Spieler. Steve is a Help Systems Training and Services Consultant. He has been working with information and reporting systems on the IBM I for over 25 years as an educator and consultant. Steve has been with Help Systems since 2006, and his focus has been on helping companies get the most out of SQL. He conducts online training and consulting, as well as in-person training, both at our in-house classroom and at customer sites. How are you today, Steve? I'm doing great, and I'm really glad to be here with you. Great. A little housekeeping about today's session. If you have questions during this session, please use the questions feature to send that question in. We will be following up with each of you and we'll address those questions during that time. I'm also recording the webinar and we will include a link to the recording in our follow-up email. So let's go ahead and get started. Data is used everywhere in organizations. Business users and managers are asking to access that data, often in a more modern way. It's not just IBM I data that the business users need to access, but also data that's sitting on other servers. Business users' needs vary within the organization. Some just want to consume information. This typically means they want to view the key information that's important to them in a dashboard, and perhaps interact with a drill down or maybe a chart graph data on the fly. There's also that group of business users that want to create their own queries, reports, or dashboards. Providing a way to make complex data more accessible, understandable, and usable almost always comes back to IT. IT departments are already stretched thin these days, so they tend to stick with what they know using their query and reporting um, tools that they've been accustomed to. Uh, writing expensive code very often. They stick with status quo because finding a solution that can bridge the gap between IT and business users is often perceived as a difficult and large project, and it really doesn't have to be. What we wanna share with you today is that jumping into BI is not a difficult project. We will share how you really can simplify data access, whether you're working with data on the I or a non-IBM I server. There really is a quick and easy way to create and deploy dashboards. Steve will also be demoing SQL. So Steve, should we get started? Sounds good to me. So our first slide is, in, is entitled, you know, Simplifying Data Access. And we know that a lot of people over the years have been using things like Query 400 to get at their IBM data. And that's an area where we can basically take those queries and improve them still use what they were designed to do, but do it a lot better. Another aspect of simplifying data access is the concept of having a single tool, one tool and one skill set to access any enterprise data. So we're not just talking about your IBM data. We also have a couple of different design environments for the people that are gonna build your inquiries, specifically suited for the very types of users that you have to actually make that happen. So it makes it a lot easier for you to fit the right designer with the right user. A single solution from back to front is something that I'll explain a little more deeply on a coming slide so you know what we mean by that, but I think you'll understand it when we get there. Um, SQL is SQL based and SQL has become really the foremost way of getting data in the modern world. It really is much more powerful and much simpler than RPG coding and much cheaper to implement. Another, access, uh, excuse me, another aspect, if you will, of simplified data access is that you don't have to have metadata repository created and maintained to support your business intelligence with SQL. It's not required. So I mentioned queries just a moment ago, and here we can see a pretty standard query 450 to 50 result. But I mentioned we can improve it. Let's see how we could make it better. 
So here we see the simple steps necessary to take that query and turning it into, into something more. So from the viewpoint designer, we do file import, query 400 definition, and then we browse to the appropriate library, identify the query, make a choice or two, and click import. Here is the same query, but as a SQL view. Um, we can do an awful lot more with it than that, but this is just the starting point of improvement. This is going to provide you not only a graphic result, a sortable result by the user, it also will allow you to do some other dynamic things like output to PC files from here if you need, but that's not the full improvement that I'm talking about. I would probably say that a better improvement would be something like this, where we add runtime prompts to that what was once a query and is now a view to provide a wide variety of filter options that the users can utilize with drop down menus and calendars and have the ability to nullify a filter at will to get all activity for that particular, in this case, product and salesman. One tool to access any enterprise data. You guys know that few businesses today are IBM I exclusive. There's always other platforms involved. And here you can see very visually platforms that we support. So you can see them listed, very common ones. Keep in mind this second IBM might be your high availability box that you use and it has data on there that you don't keep on the main production box. So it's a valid data access. The other thing to mention is we're not just limited to standard servers, but data found in Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Access as well. I mentioned as part of the simplicity, different designers that you can use. This one is called the View Designer. The View Designer has really all the aspects of building an inquiry on a single screen. It tends to be preferred by your IT designers. It's also oftentimes preferred by people that have tools experience. And it does have this SQL tab here at the bottom so that if you have SQL experts, if you will, as part of your staff, they can go in there and actually type SQL directly in there as opposed to using the graphic interface. This happens to be the designer that I prefer to use. So you're gonna see me using it quite a bit during the demonstration. I said multiple designers. This one's called the View Builder. This is a guided interface. So each of these tabs has a different uh, purpose, if you will, and it helps guide through the creation. Non-IT designers oftentimes like that because they don't need to know the clause name or know to where to click on the screen. You just click on the tab. But you'll also find some of your IT designers, oftentimes those that are really familiar and comfortable on a 5250 screens, will like the tabs because they're used to menus that they might have in a 5250 environment. So non-IT and IT might like that one a lot. Now let's talk about that single solution back in front that I mentioned when I was referring to simplicity. So when we talk about the back end, oftentimes your BI needs to collect data and it might be coming from many different sources and that's all handled by SQL. Another thing we oftentimes do on the back end to support your BI is to use SQL to create data marts of summarized positioned information that allows rapid deployment of information and very fast response times. Also part of the back end are the job streams that we can create within SQL, and this will allow you to have information distribution of many types. It might be PC delivery to by email or to folders. It might be a matter of pushing or pulling data to or from other platforms. Now for the front end, we're talking about the user experience oftentimes. And with SQL, you have graphic delivery, GUI delivery, both in the Windows and in the browser world. And you're gonna see that during the demonstration. Your front end might be producing production reports that are then presented to the users. Cross tab summary as an alternative type of summarization, as well as pivotal summarization, and drill down summary is another part of the front end delivery that SQL offers as part of its package.
dashboards, of course, is really the the thing that people seem to focus on now because for front end, the dashboards can offer a lot of information in one space. So Stacy, so why don't you talk, talk about, a little bit about dashboards? Yeah, I was gonna say, let's talk about dashboards. Business <laughs> intelligence really is such a broad term. Um, it comprises strategies and technologies used by organizations for the data analysis of business information. And one way to provide the user community with BI is through dashboards. Dashboards hide the complexity of the data, can help provide visibility to key information, giving management and business users the ability to track progress, performance, spot trends. Having this information at their fingertips can help accelerate decision making and help decision makers run and grow their business. As we said at the beginning of the webinar, the challenge for organizations is very often moving from status quo. There is a struggle to find a solution that will take advantage of the queries they've already created, not require metadata, not require special programming skills, something that's essentially quick to install, easy to use, and quick to deploy. With SQL moving from queries, legacy queries, to dashboards is really quite easy. Here's just one example of how a dashboard might look. We have another example that we want to share with you. Um, Dashboards can really easily be customized with different object types from displaying row and column type data, including charts, gauges. And what can bring additional power to dashboards are action buttons. Action buttons allow you to launch another object, which could be another dashboard, a report, a web page, and that result of that action button will actually generate a separate window outside of the dashboard. Steve will be covering the different types of objects during the demonstration. Um, so Steve, I'm really excited to show our attendee SQL. Shall we move on to the demo? That sounds great to me, Stacy. I'm gonna start off today with an open view designer screen and I'm gonna import a query definition. File import AS400 query now this is going to bring up my library list I'm going to type in the library of interest refresh and get a list of queries in that library Sales is the one I'm going to choose. Make a minor adjustment to my syntax and click the import. So this is reading the query and it's now going to go and populate the tables, do the joining, pick the columns, and had there been sorting or filtering, those would have been included as well. I can display it right away to see the results. I'm also going to save it so I can show it to you in the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and open up or actually bring up the browser explorer. And I can basically put in the library name and either filter on an object type name mask or maybe an object type. And there's my view one. I'm going to double click to run it. So here's our result. And again, nice presentation of the query. We can highlight some cells and create a chart. We'll see charting a little later on. We can print, we can save, we can email. We also can restrict access to those if we need. Also on the Explorer, we can set up what we call bookmarks to mark uh, and identify objects that you run frequently and you just click on bookmarks to see those. And you can also look at the recently used objects. All right, so with all that done, I'm gonna move on. I've already saved this view and I'm going to clear it out, actually create a new one by clicking the new button. Didn't clear anything out, it was already saved. And I wanna build the same result. 
but this time from scratch. So the query utilized the sales history file and it used the customer master file. Click the wrong one. And it included the part master file. So those three tables were used in the query. I'm going to use them here and click open. This will give you a chance to see the auto join in action. So set up so that the files join automatically. We'll see how to do manual join in a little bit. Now, once we've got the tables, once we've got the joins, we're now ready to pick some columns. I'd like to have the uh, state and the customer number and customer name in this. I think I also want the region fields. Let me scroll down and find that. I'm going to drag it and put it next to the state field, CSTTE. From the third file, I'd like product class. I'll double click that. And from the first file, the first table, I'm going to grab the product number and the year and the month and the quantity and the actual selling price. I want the standard cost that's here in table three. And from the customer master file, I'd like some address information as well. And this is just to match what was in the query before. So it's that easy to build from scratch if you have a query. I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to go back to the original view one save from the query, and we're going to make our improvements there. I just put from scratch in the description. All right. So on my recent tab, I can find my view one. I'm just going to close my other design screen because I'm going to do a right click and design. So again, this is the converted query ready to be improved. One improvement, I don't like the fact that we have the product, but no product description. So I'm gonna drag that right next to product number. I think I also want a calculation. So I'm gonna to go to the far right and find an empty column, and I'm gonna do a right-click expression editor. Now I'm gonna create a fairly simple one, price times quantity. Since I've selected fields already. I don't have to be digging around the files to find them. I can just double click actual selling price times quantity. Now with your calculations, you have lots of things you can control. For instance, we give them sales D a field name. That field name can be referenced in the SQL and can also be the field name in an output file. I'm gonna change the length because I don't want three decimals. It got that because the actual selling price was three decimals. I also wanna give it a column heading. And I'm gonna change the editing by clicking on the editing cell and just saying I want a currency symbol. And I pick that up from my regional settings. I'm going to put that new column right next to the quantity. So quantity, then sales dollars. You'll notice other columns came in without a column heading. Those weren't in the query. And I can add them in just as easily. Now, the query didn't have any sorting, but we are going to sort this one. I'm going to sort on customer name, click, year, and month. Now, clicking on the sorting cell gives you an ascending sort. Clicking on it again gives you a drop down to choose a different sort, descending, absolute value ascending, absolute value descending. So very easy to sort differently. Filtering is pretty easy. If you're already familiar with SQL, you know filtering and where are synonymous. If not, 
clicking the where button brings up your expression for building a filter. I'm going to filter on a field that's displayed, that field being the product number. I want it to be equal to, and I could put in a value, but I'm going to put in a variable instead. Now, variables can be simple or sophisticated. I'm going to start off simple, and I'm going to just hit the display button, no refinement, and there's my prompt. Easy as that. Type in a, a known valid number, click OK, and it's going to return that data. So we'll see only BMX 100 in our displayed result. In the variables tab, we can make refinements. For example, the prompt text is not very descriptive. Pick a product. We're going to have a drop down list to pick from. Integrity test is where we make that happen. Now, if we weren't going to do a drop down list, at bare minimum, I would have changed it to uppercase entry only so that the user couldn't put in a character type that would not be valid for a product number. But I'm going to do a DB list. That means the drop down list comes from data on the IBM, database list. I'm going to choose the object after first choosing the library. And by the way, we can create views to serve as our drop down list providers as well. But I'm using a physical table. And I'm going to use the part master for that. Once I've done that, I've got a drop down and I just have to pick the column, the field from that table that is the product number needed in the filter. If I have a description, which I happen to, I can have that be what shows up in the drop down list. I pick the description, I get the product code. <coughs> so I've gone ahead and hit the display, and here is our list of product options, alphabetic. I'm going to do BMX Silver Plated Edition, and I'm going to just do the quick show SQL. It always opens up on my other monitor, so let me just drag it over. This is the SQL behind that whole view with the value entered, and there's BMX 800, so obviously that particular product is a BMX 800 Silver Plated Edition. And there's our result. And of course, you can see they're all BMX 800s. They're all BMX silver plated. All right, so that gives us some nice changes. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Because I'm going to use it in the dashboard before too long. Now I'm going to create a brand new view, so I'm clicking the new button. This time it's really just to show you, excuse me, forgot a step, how easy it is to build the same kind of inquiry over data from another platform. So I did file properties, because what I need to do is go and change the database to, in this case, a Microsoft SQL Server database. So right now it's connecting, and now that it's connected, right-click Database Files, and it's going to bring up the folders available to me on this Microsoft SQL Server database. I'm going to go to the folder that I want. I'm going to find the two tables I'm interested, Orders and Order Details. Click and Control-click. I'm going. To... Now we don't have Auto Join here, so I'm going to just do the join manually, which is a matter of left clicking on one field, dragging to the next field, and releasing. Field names happen to be the same, but they don't have to be. Once the join is in place, I can then go ahead and add the fields that I want, like the customer ID and the employee ID and the product ID and the unit price and the quantity, whatever they are. And of course, I can display it. I 
I'm not going to take the time to do a filter or sorting, but it's no different. And that's really the purpose of this is to show you that the skills that you learn and use to build data views over your IBM data are exactly the same as views for your other data sources. I don't think I'm going to use this one again, but just in case I do. I'm going to save it. Okay, so we've been working in the um, I guess in the Windows environment for quite a while now. So let's kind of nip back over to something browser. So I just want to show you that I can have a simple shortcut on my desktop, and that shortcut is running a browser dashboard. Notice I have to authenticate that I am allowed. And I gotta make sure I get my password right. I oftentimes type it wrong. And here's our dashboard, and we have on the left some radial gauges. We have a pie chart and a bar chart. We've got some data, and we've got a number of action buttons that can run other things, like dashboards or other inquiries. So it's that easy to deploy them. You don't need to go through that browser explorer that we used earlier. So how do we create a dashboard? easy to deploy, how easy is it to create? So I just click, look, click the wrong button. I meant to do a drop down on new because I don't want to create a new view. I want to create a dashboard. So here's my dashboard. I'm going to begin by inserting a couple of SQL files. And I'm going to insert this one some view that I've already created. I'm going to put it at the bottom left. This has a runtime prompt. Now, when I choose that, I can either make that the permanent value for this dashboard, always run product type or class, excuse me, or I can say no, in which case every time I run the dashboard, I'll be given an opportunity to choose a different value. All right, I'm going to insert another one as well. So I'll right click Insert SQL Object. This particular one also has a runtime prompt, and it's going to be that view that was created and, and then improved by migrating the Query 400 query. Same choice. I want it to prompt me each time, so I said no, don't save it with the dashboard. There's times when you want to. Now I want to add something a little more visual. So I'm going to insert a chart. So to insert a chart, we can choose some cells and you can choose a whole column, but that'll be a very busy chart. So I'm just going to grab these, highlight them, and I'm going to click the bar chart image from the toolbar of the displayed result. So this is giving me a pie chart. I could change to a bar or if the data was appropriate, a line, et cetera, and so on. Um, I can also set this view of data that I built the chart over to auto refresh. 
And if I type in 1200, it's going to re-refresh itself every 20 minutes. You may have also noticed when I right-clicked, I have the opportunity to hide the data. So I can put a bunch of charts and gauges on there and then hide the data to make room for other charts and gauges. Now I want to add a, a gauge. Gauge is another way of providing visual information. The process is insert, gauge, and your gauge types are here. There's quite a few. Uh, the radial gauges are popular. I like the obvious impact of the traffic light. Now, in this case, you actually have to choose the gauge and then pick the data. So let's say I only want to do this BMX carton. I'm going to just click on that cell, and I'm basically saying I want my traffic light to show me performance for that particular product. Then I click Next. Now I get to say, what do I consider good or bad performance? So I'm going to say anything between, we're going to say 200,000 is my high. And 120,000. So that's my low and high for green. And usually I go from the bottom up, so I'll do it this way instead. So I'm going to do 52. and 120,000. Okay, I'm gonna click Next. So I've now set the parameters of good and bad performance or average. Background colors can be chosen. I usually stick with white, it goes with everything. And I'm gonna click Finish. And there's my traffic light and I can drag it and put it down here. Uh, as a rule, you're going to resize things. And you're also going to probably provide some text to describe what that traffic light represents. And even what they can do is a digital pan panel, which would be the dollar amount, which display as well with the traffic light. The last thing I'm going to add into this dashboard, and this is just a quick how does it work, is a action button or an, an action button, I guess I should say. And I'm going to have this action button run a drill down application, another SQL object, one we haven't actually talked about. So I'm just going to give it button text that says drill down. Obviously, you'd use something more meaningful. You choose a button color of your choice, not too dark, because the characters for that description drill down are black. Pick a font size. The default is a bit small for me but you can change your default. Now this actually opened up on my other window, so let me drag it back. I clicked on the button next to Verdana. I'm gonna make it 12 in bold. I'm gonna click OK. And I could make this my default by putting a check mark here, but I like to be able to show you how to change it, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do SQL object, because now that I've got a button, I have to basically tell it what SQL object I wanna run, and this is my drill down application. Now, different things that we run from an action button might have different actions. With a drill down application, it's strictly visual, so display it. But others can email, print, PC file creation, et cetera, from an action button. I'm going to click OK and OK. And now I've got my action button. I'm going to just take it here, drag it down to the bottom, make the button a little bit bigger. That just suits me. Then I'm going to save my dashboard. I'm going to run it in the browser. So we created the dashboard. Here it is in our library. I'm going to double click to run it. Again, the prompts do come up. Because of the choices I made. So every time that runs, the user will have that opportunity. All right, here's our dashboard displayed. 
we can see our traffic light. Let's take a look at the drill down application from the action. So here's the way the data looks like when it comes up. These arrows indicate a drill down path or paths. Here we have three of them, and I'm going to choose orders for the selected customer, and then we see their orders. Now I'm going to choose an order of interest. Now I pick this one, and I can view the actual details of that order, and I could have multiple paths on any level. I'm going to go back to the first screen of the drill down application, the customer level, to show you another thing. That would be subtotals. Now subtotals allow us to do just that, subtotals and grand totals. I'm going to first sequence my results based on what I'd like to subtotal by, in this case, state. Then I click the subtotals toolbar option, and that's going to bring up this dialog. So I have to match my sorting to the subtotal level state. I'm going to have my data subtotals and grand totals above, not below. And I'm going to get a sum of the current balance due and a, maybe an average credit limit for customers in each state. And I'm going to click OK. Just know this result is not only displayed, but it can also be exported to Excel. Back to the Explorer, I want to show you one more thing. That would be uh, a drill down application. So I'm going to click it. and. I'm sorry, that was not what I wanted to show you. I want to show you a sales analysis client table. Slip the gear there for a moment. So a client table is slice and dice information. I just want you to see how I do that. So I'm going to first expand it, which will show me the data at the starting level. But then I'm going to change the summary level because I can. And I'm going to expand that. I can filter on any of the elements other than the, in this case, unit sales. So I don't want 2001. I can also switch up to see countries instead of territories, because that's my preference. And there's the data. I can filter on, say, regions, because I don't want the Asia Pacific. It's not my area of, of responsibility. And now Australia and Japan have just fallen away. I can also change it up quite a bit from the product row geographic column starting point. It's an entirely different way of seeing the data just by dragging things around. I can graph at any time. Actually, I don't want to grab the total there. It'll skew the graph. And I'll do a quick line graph. And of course, there's drill down to detail. So if this value intrigues me, double click, I get that data, which is exportable to Excel as the whole displayed result that you see right here is also exportable to Excel. And with that, we're gonna to return to the presentation. There are a couple of things I would have liked to have covered in more depth in the demonstration. Let's cover them in these two slides. First off, client table creation is simple, and this goes back to not having a need for metadata. All you need is a view, and that view needs to contain columns with the data that you want to analyze and the fields that represent how you want to analyze it, whether it's product or type or period or what have you, geographic, etc. To get it, you just have to run through an easy four-step wizard. Provide the description, choose the field or fields that'll be the starting point for your rows, the field or fields that will be the starting point for your columns, and the fields will be the data that you're gonna analyze. That's all it takes. Another thing we didn't really look at during the demonstration was production reporting. And with SQL, we have two different production reporters, report writers that you can use. The SQL report writer provides your more vanilla type of report. Great for lots of data, easy distribution. On the right side, though, we see our SQL viewpoint client report. And this, again, is a production report, but much more graphic in nature. 
Thanks, Steve, for all the great information and the demo of SQL. So our hope is that you learned a little bit more about SQL and that you learned that there really is a simple way to move into BI. It's not something that has to overwhelm the IT department. I would like to remind everyone that for any questions that came in during the webinar, we will reach out to answer those questions individually. And as I mentioned in the beginning, you will receive a follow-up email that will include a link to the recording. So Steve, thanks again. Nice job with the information and the demonstration. It was my pleasure, Stacy. And thanks everyone for joining us today. We really appreciate it and we hope you have a great day. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.